Okay, we're signing the papers. Got my change. <laughs> okay. 312. Back to get back to you? Yes. I love you. Oh, thanks! <laughs> Say hello, wave hello Winnie. Wave hello, you know how. Hi everyone. Today's video is one that honestly I have dreamed of making for many, many years. Ever since when I started posting back on YouTube in 2011 and even prior to my YouTube channel, I had a couple different eBay stores when I was literally like 14 and 15 buying bulk amounts of Beanie Babies and then breaking them down and selling them individually and then also selling that lanyard string. I'd buy the full rolls and then I'd sell it to like whatever cut lengths you wanted it. As many of you guys know, I also have an online shop, LoneFox.com, where I sell a bunch of contemporary home goods, which if you've never checked it out, definitely check it out because I spend so much time working on the website. You guys, I do all of it myself because I'm so crazy about how everything looks, but I absolutely love it. And that is why I'm so excited to announce that I am getting my own booth at the Mark Collective over in Venice. It's more so like Santa Monica slash Venice over in that kind of area of Los Angeles. But if you've never been to the Mark Collective, even if you don't want to check out my booth, like I highly recommend it. It is my hands down favorite favorite antique shop in all of Los Angeles. Like whenever I need some finishing pieces or even like a furniture item, a piece of art for a project, that's always where I'm looking. And I actually ended up meeting the owner over a year ago. And when I met him, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put my name on the list for a booth because maybe when I get a message one day or a DM on Instagram saying, we have something available, I will be ready. And about two weeks ago, guess what DM popped up on my phone and I literally stopped everything because I was beyond excited to set up my first antique booth. And that is our project for the week. It's going to be transforming this booth, giving it a facelift because it definitely needs a little something. And just to give you guys a little background, if you do not know what an antique booth is or an antique mall, it's kind of like what it sounds in the sense of a mall in that there's different vendors inside of a larger store. So for example, the Mark Collective where my booth is, they might rent out a hundred different booth spaces within their large store to these different dealers. Then the dealers have to pay their portion of rent, but it's far, far smaller of course than having your own store because I actually looked into having a Lone Fox store in Los Angeles and I'm just gonna let you guys know like the rent was a minimum of like 15k a month and that's just that's not okay and then on top of that the antique mall traditionally will take a small percentage of all the sales as well because they are staffing the entire store and helping anyone that's purchasing larger pieces of furniture and basically doing all the transactional sales for you so yes that was a long little spiel there Winston is going crazy around here but we are working on my antique booth at the Mark Collective this week and when this video comes out it is going to be open over at the Mark Collective and I have no plans on closing this or anything like that so even if you have a trip planned to LA in eight months from now you should be able to visit my booth over at the Mark Collective but let's go ahead and dive on in to transforming this space I just got to the Mart and I apologize for the music, it's a little loud in here, but it's time to set up the booth and this is the first time I am seeing the spot open. Look at this space. So I don't know if you can really tell this diagonal line on the ground here, that's part of the space, but it's essentially 14 by 13 feet. And I want to fill this up with so many incredible fun vintage finds that I've been of course collecting, saving, and this is a space that they're all going to be living in. Justin, could you film an empty booth tour? This is my little spot. It's actually right by the front door, which is just right here. The main door is over on this side, which is where the parking lot is. So if you walk in, you can have to walk across. And then over here, I have this wall, this long wall. And then we have all of this space out here. And I don't know exactly what we're gonna be doing. I've been collecting a couple of display pieces, some furniture to sell. We're gonna kind of play it by ear, so let's get started. I mapped out a little floor plan to give me an idea of some of the furniture that we're gonna be bringing into the space. And I used the West Elm one, it's so easy to use, but I know I want cabinets in the back here, some hutches as well. Then in the center, I'm thinking of having a free floating island. And then on the back wall, our large bookshelf, which is gonna hold a majority of our small items. 
On these walls right here, it's kind of like a rice paper texture that they said have been on them for over 10 years, and I want to do something different. I just want to kind of joint compound over the top and create more of a smooth surface because at the moment, it kind of you can see the plywood through it, you can see the rice paper through it. It's just a lot happening. So I want to give it like a smooth kind of skim coat of just some joint compound. I picked it up at Lowe's, $20, super affordable. We're gonna scrape some of the texture off, and I think that will give it more of an actual appearance of a wall as opposed to some plywood put up. So yeah, we should see how that looks, but I think it will be really pretty. So I'm using joint compound because I've always loved the color of joint compound and I feel like if I get like a decent application, since it's more of like a display wall in a sense, I don't mind the durability or just like kind of like the finish of it. I think that the joint compound can actually be really pretty and it's only $20 for this entire tub so super affordable. And we're just going to cover this and give it kind of like a coat of plaster. Already into it. Look at that. Like, just the imperfection of that, I already like it. Now for this particular application, I knew I was going to be pretty messy with the actual application of it because I wasn't going for a super smooth, clean finish on these walls. I'm going to be pretty much covering all the walls anyways with my items, decor, and artwork. So I just wanted something that felt a little bit more clean and gave a bit of texture as well. Skim coat is all done on both walls. It took like an hour and a half. We ended up using all five gallons of the product though, which I did not think we were gonna use, but that whole bucket was only 20 bucks. So pretty good investment. I like how clean that looks. I actually ended up finding a really cool shelving system on Facebook Marketplace probably about three weeks ago. Once I found out I was getting this booth, pop it up right here. We're gonna bring it in from the car and then that's all we're gonna do today because I wanna let this dry. We're gonna get the shelving system set up and then tomorrow we can actually bring over items and put them in. The guy actually had it completely unbuilt when we got there to pick it up so we didn't even see it built and we have no idea how to put it together. With a little bit of eyeballing the pieces, I was able to figure out how to put this bookshelf together. It's actually super simple and I love how convertible it is as well. And I also found out that it has lights on the top half, which was great. This is what the booth ended up looking like before heading home that night. adding the price tags to the items and I just want to share with you some great contraptions I picked up and also these little business cards I had made. Look how cute these are. These here are the small little cards that I had created. I just quickly whipped this up on Photoshop. I added my logo and then just my website and little Instagram handle on there. I love how these turned out. I got 500 of them and had them cut and printed on cardstock at like a local print shop. And my newest favorite gadget that I picked up, this label maker or what I'm using it for is like the perfect little price tag maker. But here you can actually see the little labels themselves and as you can see hand forged copper pitcher vintage and it's really cool you use an app to create whatever label they have a bunch of different fonts and it's really easy I love how it connects up to your phone this is not sponsored and also you guys this thing's only like $25 I was so shocked with how great it works it doesn't even use ink it uses heat to transfer the text over I just don't want to handwrite it so I just sat in bed the other night, printed all these out in a row, so quick and easy. I took a photo of like every item and then I was just in bed typing what they were and then printing out the labels, added the price on them and also my little vendor number down here. And this here is what it will look like once I add it to an item. This one is going on a really great chandelier. It is, oh my gosh, beautiful. I'm so excited to share it tomorrow. Taking them away in these boxes, but as you can see, we have a bunch of stuff that's gonna be taken tomorrow to still get price tags for these items all of these items here. Let's make one together. This is genuinely so fun for me, you guys. Like, I've always wanted a reason to print price tags for an item. I've always wanted an in-store, like, 
booth. I did have one for a month over at Soho Home, which was so much fun and so many pieces sold, but I was still waiting for a booth over at the Mart, so I finally got one. I'm so excited and I'm making price tags, so let's make one together. So once you purchase this, there's actually a QR code and you could scan it and then it downloads an app and it's called Print Master. So for the item, um, you just go in and double tap and I could just name whatever I want this item to be. So let me see what. I have this really great little side table here. It's kind of like an arts and crafts slash mission style side table or plant stand. Arts and crafts oak side table. This one, this one will be $1.95. If you go to New York or Los Angeles, prices of antiques are just so much more. And so if you see items and you're wondering why the prices are like this, and I don't even think that's really too bad for this. It's so cute. So then once you're ready to print, you just click print now. Ah, oh, look at that. I just printed a label. Put the sticker on and then I got this little hole punch. I'll link everything I got for you guys. I got like the hole punch, uh, this, these little tag strings as well. I love the uh, material. So now we have our price tag on here. And the nice thing too about printing these on little stickers is that if you just wanna put it on like a smaller item, something like this candle holder, for example, you might not want like a big chunky tag hanging off of it. You can just use the sticker and put it right across here. And the great thing about these stickers is they're the ones that peel off so nicely. They don't rip. They're like made of vinyl or something, but I'll be here for another four hours doing this, but it is fun. So I'm gonna continue listening to, what was I listening to? Spaghetti. Good morning, it is the day that we are moving all the items into the booth. Ended up packing up almost everything last night until about 1 a.m. But I am actually going to be offering a couple of items from the Lone Fox website within the booth as well. Uh, there are newer pieces, however, I was speaking with the owners of the antique mall and they were mentioning that they would love to kind of have a little mix of that in there. Um, and I thought it would be fun as well. So I picked some of my favorite pieces and I ordered some stock of them so we have them to bring. We have all of these items items. We have all this glassware and these coasters from Sophie Lou Jacobson, which I really love this brand and designer. We carry this over on the website as well. We don't carry coffee table books on the site because the margins on coffee table books are not great and they're super heavy, so they cost a lot to ship. So yeah, that's why they're not really online. Um, You can just get them way easier on Amazon, essentially. But since I have it in store, I thought I'd have some coffee table books, mainly also for styling in the booth. So I got a bunch of different ones that I personally love. I'm bringing this workbench as well. It's going to be like the island in the booth. Lug is actually on their way right now to pick up all of these pieces. And if you guys have never ever used or heard of Lug before, it's truly the best. But if you ever need help like picking up an item or moving something, or if you buy something like at a store or a couch at a flea market or anything on Facebook Marketplace, like anything like that, I have ordered over probably 50 Lugs because genuinely I love using the service. It's so easy. You just type in the address that you're picking up from. The drop off address, you upload a photo of the item, and it's honestly so greatly priced for the manpower that these people have as well, and just also their expertise of like packing and moving everything. I feel like I'm doing like a brand deal right now, which I'm literally not because Lug is just incredible. So they're going to be picking up essentially all of this, bringing it over to the Mart, and then dropping it off at my booth. There's just quite a bit of pieces, and Justin has a smaller truck, and so it just would be far more convenient doing one trip like this and having some help with it. So yep, I'm going that route. All right. We have everything kind of moved out of here. We have some chairs out here, coffee table, some cabinets, um, this really cool base for the mirror, this hutch right here. Alrighty, we have everything in the booth and I'm honestly hoping that I have enough stuff because it doesn't look like I do. But once it's all out of the boxes and kind of gets a little more space, I think it will be nice. I have this large cabinet over here, a mirror, which has a really cool base, which is over here. This workbench, which is kind of going to be an island. And this is going to kind of be the art wall. Oh, I didn't even share with you guys how the walls turned out. Like a simple little plastered Texture. So that is what I'm sticking with for the moment. 
So because I was able to map out prior the floor plan of my booth, I was able to kind of get an idea for how many furniture pieces I wanted to bring. So I knew I wanted to have a floating island in the center and then kind of have a perimeter of furniture around the edge. Now, originally I thought I wanted the workbench to actually be parallel with a bookcase like this, but I actually swapped it to run the opposite way. And this looked so much better, mainly because the front of the workbench now faces the front of the booth. So it just feels a little bit more intentional. I also added taller openings on the bottom of this wide bookshelf because I wanted to add things like that chest of drawers you see on the left. I was able to tuck that in on the underside of the bookshelf. I could put chairs there or any other furniture to display in those larger areas, but I kept all the extra shelves so I can add those in on the bottom side if in the future I want to do more small items and less furniture so I can always switch it up, which is what I love about this unit. And then I ended up filling this unit with a bunch of my small goods and it was just so fun starting to see this come together. This is our art wall over here, so I knew I wanted to have all the artwork kind of be in one area and showcase it almost like a little gallery. It is looking so good so far. I cannot believe how full it looks actually. And I love the shelves over on the side, the art we added, the island in the middle. There's like a coffee table in the front as well that's for sale. Justin's over here adding some handles to this cabinet that we have. And then it looks like this over here. Oh, it's turning out so cute so far. It is now Friday. I've spent a couple hours here this morning just wrapping everything up and bringing over a few more items that I felt like we needed to fill in some spaces. And I was also just waiting on a few things. I got some pillow inserts, the pillowcases that I got. Also, you can kind of tell that I added some lamps as well, but it is almost time for me to reveal to you guys my little antique booth at the Mart Collective. You can kind of see it right here. Just got around to hanging up the little sign that I created with some house numbers, actually, just from Amazon, and ended up painting them with a Metal Masters brass paint to give them kind of like a bronze look to them and love them so got those up on the wall stuck the pillows over in the pillow section and then got everything kind of tweaked and perfect for the reveal and i am ready to share with you guys the lone fox antique booth at the mark collective which is now available to come and shop so if you are in los angeles you happen to be in venice or santa monica area you can pop on by it is on lincoln boulevard i'll put the address up for you guys right here let me go ahead and reveal the space to you in three two one Thank you all so much for watching this video and I hope that you enjoyed it. I just am so beyond excited and happy with how my booth turned out. I love it so much. It was so much fun and I definitely feel like it's going to be a work in progress. And I'd also love to know if you guys would love to see maybe some like booth refresh videos every now and then, like maybe one every season or something I thought could be fun to mix into the channel and we could do like some seasonal updates or paint the walls, move furniture around, things like that. I'm someone that genuinely loves the entire process of having a shop. From finding the items that you need to cleaning them, to price tagging them, to putting them in the store, to hopefully selling them. It's just a fun journey and I think it's really interesting to see what people like. And also maybe this inspired you to open your very own antique booth because it could be something just check out some antique malls in your area, see if they have any booths available, and it could be a great little source of extra income for you as well. So I will catch you guys all in my next one and if you're not able to check out the booth you can always 
always shop online at LoneFox.com where we have a huge assortment of all the contemporary items you saw and then a bunch of different vintage goods as well. I'll catch you guys all in my next one and maybe I will see you at my booth at the Mark Collective. Bye!